All right, we are on the play in the finals. Um, this sounds great. Got Deadweight, got Tooth Collector, which has been great this, this draft. Pretty easy keep. Probably some amalgams are really good free drop. Like, I think cards like this, it's like, it's kind of easy to get over them, um, to think about the ability too much and forget that it's just a 3 mana 3-3, free free, which is also a great card in Libertad. I think this card, Warped Landscape, by the way, is really bad. I think if you can possibly avoid it, you should have, you should not put that card in your deck. It's just really, really slow. Like the idea of on turn three, paying two mana to to crack this, it's kind of awful. Um. Yeah, I think we just tooth collector here. Attack. I guess I'll play this, uh, this there's not really a reason not to, in case he has more well, of flash creatures in black, so I'm not really sure what he could have. Yeah, this is my practice thing. See, this puts him so far behind. I think, like, if you're green, then you can definitely splash in this format. But I think, outside of that, you want to try and be two colours if you possibly can. Um. Yeah, let me swing that thing. That is fine. Um, no reason not to run out with Diagraph Colossus here. And it's very likely he just dies next turn. Especially if we have this apparatus, so we're just getting down to two. And he scoops him up. Okay, so our opponent kind of got mana screwed that game. Um, or, I don't know, had a very clunky draw one way or another. But yeah, I think that's kind of the issue with the, the card Warped Landscape, was he had his mana fixer, yet we're still saying he got mana screwed, so I think that kind of shows how bad the card is. Okay, so against another blue-black deck, which I suppose would generally lead to a fairly grindy game. Which might lead us to want something like Macabre Waltz. Not sure whether we want to bring it in on like no information though. Yeah, I think we just run it back. Um well this sounds pretty clunky. Um I think despite what happened last time we we kept hand with no black mana, I'm gonna keep. Um, especially being on the draw, like, we've got a lot of chance to draw into it, and we've got three very castable blue cards in our hand. Now, obviously, it's very slow, but, um, like, if we were playing against, like, for example, our opponent's deck from the last game, I would definitely not keep this hand. But against blue black, it's, um, it's fine. I'm just gonna run a sinister cock option out here. Uh, they would drew this swamp, but I think yeah, given we only have one swamp, it's um definitely just want to get this out there as soon as we can. 
There are times when you want to hold this in hand to, um, to conceal a little bit of information, but it's only if you have plenty of black mana. Is what a splash colour is. Okay, so we splash it. Okay, I think we're just going to lead on the stitch ring scarp here. This gets him the most damage if he doesn't kill it. Yeah, we actually get to attack for things like Ross and Heart. Ooh. Fire. This way, if he doesn't play something but we care about blocking, then next turn we get to attack both of these for four. Um, okay, so I think this is a fairly strong signal for he has grotesque mutation. Um, is the main one I can think of that would get him the extra three. But I suppose like it's there's not really any downside to him attacking here. Hmm. Yeah, I think we block just because. Um, Like, yeah, there's no cost to him attacking in this spot. Like, the reason not to would be we have this Compelling Deterrence in hand and a Sinister Concoction in play. But then I don't think he's going to go for a combat trick into open mana anyway. So, yeah. I think that's okay, Fiery Temper Post Combat, sure. Double Tooth Collector is pretty fun. I'm just going to ditch her Compound Deterrence here. Partly it just gets us another card in, in our graveyard for Delirium. Okay, I'm just going to push him, that's fine. And get it back later. So I think here we want to attack with the Lamplighter, and he probably blocks, and we probably get him with Tooth Collector. We of course then have to discard a card, but that's still, still a good deal for us. Just gonna discard this Rotten Heart Ghoul. Okay, no, deny existence. Denies as our blur out. Our opponent looks like we've got a pretty good control list. Okay, um... So if we play a Lamplighter here, we don't get to loot. I think I'm just going to play the Rotten Heart Ghoul and crack the Vessel. I suppose in which case I should just do this now in case I draw something that I care about. Right, Amalgam, eh? I think I'm actually going to play the prized Amalgam because, um... So this way I can firstly make the same play as I made previously of attacking the prized Amalgam and then Tooth Collector in post-combat. And also if it trades off then we're going to get it back this game, I think. With uh, the Ghoul Seed and the Stitchwing Scarb in the bin. 
of the explosive apparatus out there as well. Hmm. Actually, it's possible I shouldn't have played the artifacts because um makes him slightly less likely to block with his ghoul. Use of Tormentor. That is a difficult card to beat. Okay, um... So I'm hoping that he tries to flip this at his end of turn, which he very much shouldn't do, because we can just kill it in response with a sinister concoction. Hmm. As for what we do for the rest of our turn, I'm pretty tempted to just, like, bring something back on end step. I don't particularly want to tap my black mana here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass for turn. And I keep this land to discard. Did not try to flip on end step, unfortunately. So we could block here and then, um, so if we block, we can use the explosive apparatus that makes him flip it. Then we kind of just wasted that. Or we can just take four. Yeah, I think I like taking four here. And the turning with Ghoul Steed. I guess we probably should have blocked actually just we'd get this back anyway. Well, it's not a massive problem though. I'm gonna attack here. Okay, double blocks, that's pretty good for us I think. Um So yeah, that's sort of that one in front. Okay, Jason Screening. So I guess we can now just crack the explosive apparatus to kill the skeleton. Hmm. Or we could just we probably just let this die to be honest and get back the uh, stitch wing scab to get it back that seems fine <laughs> do you have an actual block on the elusive torment in that vein Well, we did do. Our opponent played this quite well. Um, yeah, I guess we have to let that, that happen. It's pretty annoying when it exiles it as well. So 
So why don't we get this back? Is it a oh, next end step? Oh, so I was meant to do that in his main phase. Well, that was kind of bad. It's also kind of unfortunate we drew the rancid rats and we can't play them and leave up the sinister concoction. I think we have to play them anyway. Hmm. Let's just play the lamplighter, so that's probably better. That was a pretty big mistake, actually, if it applies to Malcolm. We did not fully understand the workings of it. Hmm. I think we still actually would rather have the rats in hand in this swamp. Although I suppose if we do have the swamp, he actually has like no good attacks. Yeah, I think we probably want the swamp actually. Weird as that sounds. So, this is a lethal attack. Oh, we actually can't activate this as well because we don't have any cards in hand. Okay, that's really bad. Uh, we just have to jump and then use, probably. He's just looking for a madness card. You do want to do this um, after they've attacked because then they can't um, can't flip it back. And stitched mangler. Well, I don't know what we could draw now. For Not that. Okay, well we saw what our opponent's deck's about. Which is very good removal. And some pretty hard to beat cards. So what can we do about that? Like, Macabre Waltz does seem pretty good. I mean, so it's bad against reduced washers. I think I don't want this. Seems like his late game is really good, so it's it's very possible we want to be a bit more aggressive. Do the well, ghosty wings is kind of bad against so much removal, though I think. Now, even though you can bounce the thing back to your hand in response to removal, it's still like. You're neutral on cards and you got behind a bunch on the tempo. We didn't see loads of flyers though. I think this is probably pretty good. Like Ghoul Steed with a ghostly wings on it kills him pretty quickly. I think other than that our deck's fine. I can see taking out a silent observer for another Rotten Heart Ghoul, but 
flyers are good against him, even if it's only a point of damage a turn. But yes, we'd like to play first. No, we would not like to keep this hand. Ugh. Well, this is bad. Um, I think with a scry, this is probably a keep. Dead weight we have to put on the bottom. I think this is like marginally better than the average five guard hand. If we but see that just being wrong. These are lands, but they're the wrong lands. That's the land that we want to see. Uh, I think we just run out of Tooth Collector. Probably has a removal spell, but if it eats a removal spell that could have killed Ghoul Steed, then we're pretty happy about it. Silent Observer. Sure. I mean, that Thought's a pretty good draw, actually, because um, if we ever get to discard it's like Lampite or Ghoul Steed, it's going to be pretty solid. Juice to Ashes, that is I will grant you. I might just end up hard casting Nagging Forts this turn. Mm, Praised Amalgam, that's a thing. Um, so I could play Praised Amalgam plus Compelling Deterrence. Attack for free. That seems pretty good. Like, at this point of the game, it's like... Probably doesn't have a load of excess lands in hand. I mean, you might do, but... A decent chance to get an actual spell. Or you just get Sanitarium Skeleton, which sucks. Oh well. Call of the Bloodline, eh? Well, if... Tooth collector lives. That's gonna be pretty good against that. Hmm. Yeah, we just attack for everything here. So we can play Rotten Heart Ghoul here, or we can play Nagging Thoughts and hope to turn on Delirium. But the thing is, we're not really going to turn on Delirium this turn, so... Or we can play the Lamplighter... I suppose if we play the Lamplighter, discard the Ghoul, or a land if we draw that, then we stand a decent chance of getting Delirium next turn with Nagging Thoughts. I think that's a little better. We could have a counter a creature spell, actually, here. That would be very feasible. Yeah. Oh well, it's not a massive deal getting that counted. Not the most important creature spells. Murderous compulsion, sure. Then the tooth collector, I imagine. No, it can be prized to Malcolm. 
I suppose it's because um figures Chief Collector can't attack next turn because he can't have a token. But if we get to get Delirium here, it's pretty good for us. Uh, so it's a little awkward because it would um like in a lot of ways be really good to take the land here. So we get to play Ron Hart Ghoul this turn. And we have a ghoul seed in our graveyard with a prize amalgam, but given that taking a ghoul seed gives us delirium, we basically have to do that. I'll just run the advanced rats out there. Let's hopefully make him regret not killing the tooth collector. We don't want to do that actually because it'll trade for a vampire token. That would be a bad idea. So let's play a ghoul steed. I'm just going to attack with a uh, ghoul seed this turn, um, because it's possibly like plays around the second tooth collector or something similar. And the downside for gets murderous compulsion actually isn't that bad with a prize amalgam of graveyard. No expect to use a block. That's fine. And investigates. Drone yard explorers, I think. Stranger with Delirium. That's kind of bad. See what he kills. Chief Collector here. Oh, that's pretty good for him. first. I believe this will be quite a long game. Do you just get back the skeleton and make an empire? Sure. Oh, you can do that twice. Well, you can only have to activate this one to turn. You can make a lot of vampires at this point. Um, there's really no point in attacking, unfortunately. I'm holding my lance in hand in case we do have a lot of ways to discard them for profit in our deck. But he is currently making two vampires every turn cycle, so 
we do need to draw something which matters. Ghostly wings. That sounds pretty good. It very possibly has removal, but we absolutely have to put it on this. So we can get something past the silence observer, sure. I mean, it's not great because, um, like, Ghosty Wings was a pretty good out for us, but, um, like, making him use a throttle on a ghoul steed is actually pretty good when we've got a prize amalgam in the yard. No, I'm just going to do this now so I can have six for his turn. Kind of strange, but it's great to draw. Do I have to lay in there? Yes. Fiery temper in response. Yeah, but I'll do it, I guess. My opponent's deck is very good. <laughs> Like, I think we absolutely had to go for it there. But I guess it was like, pretty likely he had fiery tempo or something. It is a real factor in this game that um, we have 16 cards left in our library and he has 14 cards left in his library. Because this game is a long way away from ending, as things stand. But he is definitely in a much stronger position. Because unless he has some way to make these guys like not be chump attacking, why well, won't just let me yield until the end of my turn? Um, yeah, like and the fact that we're at twenty, it's pretty hard for him to actually be able to kill us. I'm going to a fine draw. For some reason my F6 key appears to be misfunctioning and I'm vaguely conscious of time. Was that? Oh, that's pretty good. He's still a fair way off killing its fame. Of Tormentor. 
Uh, Vessel of Pamnesia speeds up the clock a little. So I think our clock at this stage is actually milling. But we do. That elusive torment is a massive problem. I'm not sure if we can beat that. Pretty sure he's in this game. I mean, he has to attack. I, I think he doesn't quite get there just attacking with the elusive. Uh, we have things like Pang's Terence could slow him down, but um, he also has like a million tokens. So. That is a thing. This is a good turn then if you use compound talents. I think if we don't use it now, we're just dead next turn. Okay, Tooth Collector can, sure. Why not kill a token? Which I somehow don't think is going to make a great difference. I'm pretty sure if he just attacks for everything, he's going to win him. And I also don't think we have any outs in our deck. So all in all, I'd say our odds are not very good. I'm going to line up the blocks, see how, see how they work out, but I'm pretty sure we're dead. And a bunch of these. And take around one million damage. Yeah, our opponent's deck was really good. Um, Elusive Tormentor is a pretty tough card to beat. But yeah, I thought the, the whole Zombies deck was quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I think I'd definitely draft it again. It was pretty fun. Um, so give the, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to our channel as well. That'd be awesome. Um, 
if you want to see more draft videos like this and suppose some standard videos coming up and yeah i'll see you back for another draft soon